But the uh, question for our blended learning director is, what kinds of situations is he going to set up for kids to be able to do that? Uh, obviously, they ought to be able to upload their stuff to a administratively controlled uh, YouTube channel, such as it exists in Google Apps for Education. Um, I would hate to see a school system try to manage and store a video like that. I don't think it's realistic. So, yeah. There's one very specific suggestion. And then, you know, being involved in a community like Google Plus and uh, Twitter and all that feel like important aspects of, uh, of a blended learning curriculum. Um, and then there was a third. This one may seem to overlap, but uh, that second one is about using media to think, to compose, to find out what you think. And the third one is about using home languages to po to describe to do finished products really to to publish and yeah you know what two and three are merging together largely I get it but um, our ability to self publish you know Peter refers to a um, class publication including um, more informal home languages more than it has in the past and, uh, and I would say publishing on a social network ought to be able to do that too I, uh, I have a particular bent on uh, the value of having our own spaces and I think not everybody agrees with this. I could certainly be open to dialogue about it. But, you know, it seems to me like um, if you go onto a space like Youth Voices and you see collected together a group of poems or videos where students are encouraged to use their home languages because those languages are what they need to express what they need to say, then it makes more sense than if it's a random, you know, what we'll look at is they have completed um, post on somebody's blog somewhere or so there's something really rich about gathering youth publication in our own spaces controlling our publications not just self-publishing controlling where and the context of those publications. I didn't know that's what this third point was about. But it is about publishing. And it is about students self-publishing. But it's also about the context that uh, they do that in. So, then I hope that helps. There are three things to consider when you think about language and who our students are, how they might use the power of what they know already to compose and think, and how some of their home languages can be published online. So, that's what Peter Elbow's work around. 
use of language and vernacular and so forth has to do with blended learning. Now Ben, the big question about is blended learning, connected learning. In a sense, I think connected learning is a kind of pause to the blended learning juggernaut. And by that I mean that too much of blended learning is vendor-based <coughs> um, programming for, for students. Um, programming, by that I mean resources online, and questions and answers and all that, where we're reproducing the worst of textbooks uh, online. And I don't think we want to do that. We want to avoid that as much as possible. Um, the worst thing a blended learning person once said when kicking off a program recently was to teachers to say your curriculum doesn't have to change just because it's online and I want to say what a of course it does yeah I mean I, I've been working so many years for in connected ways that by that I mean working with students to think about how's this different because it's online but to say that to a bunch of teachers about to develop curriculum for online experiences feels crazy to me. Uh, I mean, it eventually proved to be too, I think. So, so much of the thinking that I do around blended curriculum is how can I put something online that captures the experience of students in a face-to-face -face situation. And not that they can do it easily, but I think they need to learn to. So there's a, an element here that I want to get to. But interesting, a student today um, started to work through um, reading and writing about economics. So here's what's available to her online. You know, there's uh, three different openly sourced, openly licensed um, textbooks. Very different um, from each other. She tried one for a while and couldn't quite understand it. Tried another one today. It's getting closer, but she isn't used to the kind of slow, difficult reading that she has to do to understand these texts. So, uh, another teacher helped her. Went through each paragraph and made her think deeply about each item. And, and that's good. But it's not learning to be an independent reader online. So the other items that I provided her were you know, a Khan Academy video that introduces economics. So in addition to reading the textbook about it and annotating it right there on the text, um, she uh, had these videos available where she could hear the words and see them again and see a kind of description of how they work. Um, so there's images and, and uh, video that uh, an audio 
that are helping her give us around to the text that she's reading. And I think all that's really important. That surround is vital. Because what it does is it replaces those experiences that you might have in the classroom with a teacher or with your peers. And you know, maybe it doesn't totally replace, but it does begin to um, give you a similar experience. And I think it's kind of important for students to be conscious that that's what they're doing. That they are, in fact, creating a multi-sensual experience and participating in conversations online and you know, replacing the face-to-face -face with media that tries in some way to, uh, to do the same thing. So when to uh, stay in the text and struggle with it, when to move off and go to uh, go to a video um, is exactly what needs to be learned uh, by the young blended learning scholar. And I think that's what um, that's how blended learning and connected learning are the same. Um, in both cases, you're making teachers um, guides on the side. And that's something we've tried to do for quite a long time, it seems to me, is learning to do that and blended connected learning gives us another impetus to uh, to become guides on the side. But I did notice the other teacher really wanting her to understand the text. But uh, she's getting help from peers and so forth too. So I think I am filled with experiences like that that are about making the resources. So here's back to Ben for a second. Uh, are the resources that are provided for students interactive? Now just being able to annotate a text is probably not enough, but I um, don't want to not do that. That's kind of an important part of it. Um, you know, she, like many students, when I asked to annotate on paper, too, say, I don't know what to do when you ask me to annotate. Or the most direct student said, you know, you're asking me to write down what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> but they do know. Or they can find out can become more self-aware and have a dialogue with the author. So, annotating text is as old as uh, you know, dialectical thinking. And uh, as new as uh, tools that we can use now like personal crocodile which allows